You may be a new viewer or maybe, you know, you just haven't heard too many of these incidences like what happened to Hastings. These are not isolated incidents. You know, that may have been the first time I've ever heard of an engine like flying down the street or so forth. That's not an, uh, a NASCAR race, but this isn't anything new. So we're going to break down for you just a small sampling, about 10 or so incidences of people who mysteriously committed suicide and so forth under very fishy circumstances. We'll go now to this first one, a recent one, FBI killing of man with ties to Zarnev, self-defense or excessive force. We'll skip down to after was there a knife. According to the uh, preliminary FBI account, Totschev became violent and lunged at the FBI special agent with a knife while being questioned about his ties to the alleged Boston bombing bomber, Tamerlan Zarnev. The target reacted to the imminent threat and shot Totschev dead. Later, the FBI backed away from that version of events. And then they're like, well, did the guy have a knife? Did he did not have a knife? And the guy was like, well, you know, we just started shooting. And when we finished, he was dead. And that's pretty much what happened to that guy. A very unfortunate circumstance, you know, just like the, uh, the younger brother having his throat slit just out of nowhere. I'm not exactly sure how that happened. We'll move on to our next one. Kate Middleton Hospital nurse dies in suspected suicide after being duped by a radio show. Now, this was a situation, maybe you guys remember it, maybe you don't. A radio show called and had a prank call and said, Oh, I'm the King of England and, oh, we just want to check on Kate's and, you know, whatever. That's a horrible accent. Their accent was probably worse than mine. And they basically duped this woman into putting them through to the room that Kate was in. And a couple days later, she was pronounced dead uh, not too far from the hospital. And the reports are saying that she killed herself. Another very fishy situation. Uh, I don't know why you would just up and kill yourself, but you know it makes sense to some people. We'll move on to this. Autopsy rules handcuffed man shot himself in the back of a police car. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. This is a very serious situation. It's just the headline is just so ridiculous. It's accurate, but it's very ridiculous. A handcuffed man that had been searched twice, searched twice, shot himself in the head in the back of a squad car. And we'll skip down a little bit. It says, police say Carter's handcuffs were double locked behind his back and he was frisked twice before being placed in the squad car. But somehow he managed to pull out his 380 caliber Cobra, Cobra semi-automatic firearm and shot himself in the back of the head. And um, once again, this is not a a famous person or somebody had something to do with a famous incident, but this is just the type of uh, tie-ins and cover-ups that can go on. I, you know, I'm not saying this guy is innocent of any particular thing, but to shoot himself in the back of the head while handcuffed after being frisked twice, that sounds more than a little fishy to me. We'll move on to this. Aaron Schwartz was killed by the government. Father tells mourners. Now, this is the father, of course, of Mr. Schwartz. And he said he was killed by the government and MIT betrayed all of their basic principles. Facing the possibility of a long prison sentence if convicted of charges that he illegally downloaded millions of academic journals, journal articles, Schwartz hanged himself in his New York apartment Friday. Now, this is the reposting of an article. I definitely don't believe that. And keep in mind, Schwartz was the type of guy that he didn't run from a fight. He was facing you know, a lengthy prison sentence. He was offered a plea deal of three months and said no to that. So why you would turn down a plea sentence of three months and then go and kill yourself, I don't exactly understand. Three months isn't all that, I mean, I wouldn't want to be locked up for one day for something I didn't do, but, you know, three months versus, you know, 30 plus years isn't that big, big bad of a deal. Now we're going to move on to Taryn Shanky. Now you can see right there at the top of the page, you may be familiar with him from A Noble Eye, a video we sell in the InfoWars shop. Mr. Yankee, well, I just want to read, let's scroll down a little bit and we'll go on here. On May 11, 1996, the New York Times ran a story with the headline, A Policeman Who Rescued Four in Bombing Kills Himself. Now, just in case you don't know, Mr. Yankee, he was a first responder during the Oklahoma City bombing. He rushed in, he saved, and like I said, four people or so. And then some things started happening. Maybe he saw a couple things that he wasn't supposed to see. And the article goes on to detail his very graphic and brutal, quote, suicide. I don't believe that for one second, but the suicide, if we can go back to the article. He said he was said to have slit his wrist, his neck, causing him to nearly bleed to death in his car, and then miraculously call, climbed a barbed wire fence, and then he was purported to have walked over a mile in distance through a nearby field and eventually shot himself through a very unusual angle. So keep in mind, this is a man who 
allegedly slit his wrist, slit his throat, uh, went out, hiked a mile or so, hopped a barbed wire fence, and then just decided this is a good place to die and shot himself in the head. And that's what the official story is. And if you say that makes absolutely no sense, I don't think I could walk across the street if I slit my wrist. If nothing else, just for the sheer panic of it, yeah, I would agree with you. But uh, according to the official story, that's, uh, that's what happens to these whistleblowers and people who just happen to see more than what they were supposed to see. We'll move on now to D.C. Madam predicted she would be suicided. Now, this is somebody who was a regular guest on the Alex Jones radio show. And let's go down to the second paragraph. If taken into custody, my physical safety and most probably my life would be jeopardized. And she said this... Uh, in 1991, she said, rape, beating, maiming, disfigurement, and more likely murder disguised in the form of just another jailhouse incident or suicide await me. And we'll scroll down a little bit more. Fraley had threatened to release the names of well-known clients to our upscale call girl ring, including those of one Dick Cheney. So when you mess around with these big, powerful guys, uh, people like Cheney, and I'm not, uh, maybe I shouldn't call Cheney big and powerful, these uh, infamous guys, uh, death could be easily a coming for you. And I remember hearing Alex Jones talk about this, uh, not, not just him, but other people as well. We'll move on to this. Only eyewitness to Breitbart's death disappears. Now, this article details not only the death of Andrew Breitbart, but also his coroner. And I believe that's, yeah, that's in the first, first sentence up there. It's, it says, following the suspected arsenic poisoning of his forensic technician. So there, there's another guy. But let's go down to the second paragraph. 26-year-old Christopher Lasseter saw Breitbart, Breitbart drop dead like a sack of potatoes on March 1st, hours before Breitbart was set to release a damning video that showed Barack Obama fraternizing with the weather underground terrorist Bill Ayers. And if I remember correctly, Bill Ayers is now calling Obama the terrorist. So that's a very strange turn of events. But there you go, Mr. Breitbart uh, dropped dead, just like the article says. He had some very uh, uh, illicit... Uh, solicit, uh, maybe that's not the word, the very infamous footage of Obama, photographs and so forth, saying that he was uh, affiliated with various groups and he just ends up dropping dead like a sack of potatoes and also his coroner died. And I believe it was reported at the time, it was just hours after he died, they said, oh, we know the exact cause of death, just hours after he died. But keep in mind, when you have situations like uh, a Whitney Houston or Michael Jackson, Situations like that, they're very calm and collected, and it takes a while for the actual cause of death to come out, but you have a situation with Breitbart where, you know, he's barely cold, and oh, we know it happened exactly like this. That's a very fishy telltale sign, and also how the coroner just up and dropped dead. Now, we're coming to the end of our segment here, but let's go to this one. Coroner Gary Webb's death confirmed as a suicide. We'll scroll down a little bit. New York. The death of investigative reporter Gary Webb has confirmed as a suicide, according to a coroner's statement. The cause of death was determined to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound, or excuse me, wounds to the head. And that's a statement issued by the Sacramento County Coroner's Office. Let's pause right there. To shoot yourself in the head with a semi-automatic firearm once is a uh, great accomplishment. But to do that twice is just so beyond me how you could do this and i'll go back to the article and it, it's just baffling i'm out of all these uh suicides and alleged suicide i should say it just really gets to me how anybody can believe that a man shot himself twice in the head with a semi-automatic firearm and then uh, have people believe it or if you dare question Mr. Webb's uh, suicide, then you're a kook, you're crazy. And of course, Webb gained national attention in the 1990s when he was writing a series of articles in the Mercury News linking the CIA to uh, Contras and so forth. So there you go, uh, guys shooting himself in the head twice, people slitting, them, slit, slitting their wrists and throats and then going jogging for a mile. Uh, who else? People uh, shooting themselves while handcuffed, people hanging themselves after they said, no, I'll fight you to the death. That's... Uh, that's the new normal. And now we have Mr. Hastings to add to that list. A gentleman who was driving in his car, regardless if he is driving fast or not, allegedly struck a tree and his car burst into flames. I'm waiting for that statement from Mercedes claiming that their vehicles don't spontaneously combust. I'm definitely sure that will drive down their, uh, their ownership if they can't get to the bottom of that one. So let's look at those pictures and you can see it right there. That thing, is, that thing fell into a burning ring of fire. 
That thing is lit up. You got shrapnel and so forth. Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay, so we're taking a look at this, and for whatever reason, they have the front end covered up, but the back end looks pretty banged up to me. Now, I'm not a master physicist and so forth, but I'm wondering why the back end is so beat up if it hit a tree. Uh, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And the reports say that the vehicle allegedly jackknifed. People heard what they believe to be an explosion. And uh, as Dave Knight pointed out in that report earlier, jackknifing is usually for trucks and uh, big heavy vehicles, not your smaller Mercedes types. So it's a very curious situation. I'm just looking at that picture right there. Very curious why the back end is so beat up. And also Mercedes, if you want to sell another car, you might want to tell people that your cars don't spontaneously combust even if they run into trees uh, at high speeds or whatever. It's very unusual. Just think about a NASCAR race. How many of those cars, you know, they may spark, they may, you know, shoot out a few uh, little sparklets, but they don't just bust into flames very rarely, I, I'm pretty sure. But that's what they're saying happened to this vehicle. Makes absolute, absolutely no sense at all. Now we'll move on to the final segment of our show. We're going to move on to this. Microsoft changes its mind on Xbox One's used games and always on policies. Now, if you remember, they were once saying that the Xbox had to be always on, permanently connected to the internet, and we'll look at some of these bullet points here, and it said it once had to be plugged in 24 hours a day just to play, and they said, we'll get rid of that, and they also said they would have certain regional restrictions, we'll get rid of that, users and so forth, we'll get rid of that, and also people made a big deal about how they wouldn't be able to play and trade games, and they said, okay, well, the people have spoken, so we'll just scrap this whole shebang, but they do require you to at least hook your Xbox up to the Internet once. I guess when you first buy it, you have to go and log in your username and passcode or what after that. But after that, you can use it uh, free, as you, free as you see fit. And it's people out crying, because I remember it was just uh, it was a week ago or two weeks ago, a guy was at a video game conference. He said, well, if you don't like the Xbox One being permanently connected to the Internet, you can go buy Xbox 360. And well, people say, well, I already have Xbox 360, so I just won't buy Xbox One. Then they go, oh, well, uh, 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 well, okay, we'll just say you don't have to connect your thing to the Internet anymore. And power of the people. You speak out, they listen, and if they don't listen to anything else, they'll listen to the bottom dollar. And I'm, I don't know what happened to that guy who made that real goofy, snotty statement, but I'm pretty sure he won't be making any press conferences anytime soon. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.